We're here to remember one of our greatest friends of all time. I have so many memories, good memories of hanging out with Taylor that I couldn't just jam them all packed into one video because we spent so much time together. Tay, I guess to start, man, I miss you so much and I'm so sorry that you had to leave us. Um, I know I speak for Meg and, and my family um, that we still feel you here and uh, we, we truly miss you and hope that you're listening listening to us and, and, and feel how much we love you and, and, and loved you through all your years. Big Tay and I became friends in 2008. Uh, we became fast friends, I think, over our mutual love of bourbon, music, and barbecue. Upon meeting Tay, I just felt at ease. Um, he just made me feel so welcome to the group, and his presence was just such a force, and I just remember feeling like I belonged. So I met Tay Tay um, when I moved to Denver and got a job at Moe's Barbecue. Um, he went there because everyone that worked there was obsessed with widespread panic except for me. It started in high school when he would drive 20 minutes out of his way to pick me up from school. We'd always listen to some new awesome jams that I'm sure George you introduced him to and um, it was just a great way to start my day. It's kind of hard being a kid with the uncle because um, he was really special to me and important. Tay Joe, we're going to the cabin, brother. Whenever you did see Tay, you know, you just had that connection and you, you picked up right where you left off because he was just that kind of guy. Everybody just seemed to gravitate towards him and if Tay was there, you were, you were enjoying yourself. He was uh, the kind of guy who had a lot of love to give and always wanted everyone to feel loved around him. You know, we really met in middle school and um, we used to talk on AOL Instant Messenger every day. Um, we share a love of music or we shared a love of music from day one. And, um, you know, I still have uh, his first debut CD, uh, The Heroes, with his name signed Tarlberg. Tay, I didn't actually realize the first time I met you. Your band was playing the Littleton grad party at my house for my sister Kelty and your cousin KB and their friends Hannah and Kelly. I was a shy middle schooler, but I remember watching you set up your gear and play from afar. I'm not the easiest going of people, um, but Taylor had such an incredibly calming effect and um, he welcomed me into the family with open arms and I truly consider him um, an incredible friend from literally the second that I met him. Tay and I both went to Highland Elementary and um, I think I was in fifth grade and he was probably in sixth grade and both of our dads were in the Chef's Association. So we went to a meeting and with our dads and we instantly bonded and we were together from then on out. Then I moved to uh, 801 Southwood Drive, just five houses up from you guys. Um, and from then on, it was every day, all day, we were hanging out. I first met Taylor back in 2004 in Fort Collins, and I can um, I can put myself in that moment. I can literally, I can visualize the room we were in, I can visualize the people that were around. I, I remember looking at him, that beard face, the, he was wearing like a, a button-up shirt, a white button-up shirt with some lines on I can remember that exact moment. There's not many people, that, of friends of mine, that I can say, I remember that moment that I met you and can picture and visualize that moment, but I can with Taylor. T and I became friends um, in high school. We lived right down the street and we're in the same neighborhood and became friends playing hockey in high school. And uh, that friendship continued. Um, and then we both attended CSU in Fort Collins. <laughs> We were basically uh, inseparable in those days. Hey, Tay. Love you, buddy. 
was just telling her about the time when I stayed on your couch like a hobo for six months and we went to Joe Cocker because you knew how much my dad loved him. I'll never forget. Love you, buddy. Well, here we are at the, the Johnson family cabin. Um, this was uh, probably Tay and I's favorite place to come up and hang out and just enjoy the beauty out here. You're such a kind and gentle soul. The world is gonna miss you, my friend. A year or two after that, you were back at our house for a party that my sister Mary Catherine threw. And years later, you were back again at my invitation after a uh, Yonder show at Red Rocks. I think that makes you the only person that I know that went to all three eras of Bywater's parties, only one of which our parents had sanctioned. He was an incredible brother um, to Meg, and he truly loved her and loves her, and um, that meant the world to me, obviously, because we both share that same love for her. Um, and he was an incredible uncle to my girls. He was always there for them, and you could just see the glimmer in his eye when he saw him, and that, obviously, for me as a dad, made me love him even more. Um, I loved kind of catching those moments between him and the girls where they were bonding and he would snap those sneak photos of them. Hi, Lo. Can you tell me who gave you that teddy? Did Tay Tay give you that teddy? Yeah. Oh. Do you miss Tay Tay? It was just so cool to see such a proud uncle that was so enraptured with those two girls and loved them unconditionally, um, and it meant the world to me. Um, I met Meg and Tay when I was 11, and me and Megan just hit it off and became inseparable. I pretty much lived at their house all through middle and high school. I adored Taylor like he was my own brother. Tay kindly invited me to prom to be with all my friends. It was a great date and it was much needed after feeling very alienated in Memphis. I think he just knew that and as always came in with the most thoughtful gift. One of my favorite stories of Big Tay and I was around 2011 him and I decided to buy some spent bourbon barrels from Odell's Brewery in Fort Collins. So him and I drove up there on a Saturday, I had my little Volkswagen Golf, buy these, have a couple beers and buy these barrels. Go out to the dock to load them up and the, guy, the, the dock workers are just laughing at us. So we've got my little hatchback, it's two big barrels. We're trying to fit them into the back, you know, moving our seats as far forward as we could. Uh, and Tay and I got in to drive away and I'm pretty sure Bottom of the car scraped as we were leaving the parking lot and we wondered if we were gonna ever make it back down to Littleton that afternoon. Uh, I think people thought of us as the whiskey clown car going down I-25. And I miss you a lot, buddy. And there's a lot, a lot of memories that I keep thinking about, you and I. There were just so many memories at Red Rocks, I, I think. Every time I go there, I'll just kind of always assume you're in the first five rows. You know, whenever I saw him, I always was running and jumping um, because seeing him was the greatest thrill of the week or the year or, you know, whatever it was. Um, I absolutely adored him. We got a lot closer uh, after college, um, particularly in going to see widespread panic. Uh, we had so many memorable times. Um, the first of which I remember is going down to New Orleans together with a big group of us. And I remember it was in our early 20s and we were probably 20 people staying in a two bedroom condo. But of course those were the days and you know, Tay was the life of the party and was such a joy to be around as he always was. When we were down New Orleans, I, uh, I guess I'd never, I don't guess, I never had, uh, shell in lobster had never like taken one apart or eaten one and his eyes like whoosh, dilated out real like he got so excited so excited I mean he 
Went or went to the went to Yelp, looked at a bunch of different restaurants. He's like, "This is the one we're going to. This is the one." And so he, uh, Chuck, Hannah, and I all went, and I got the lobster bib, and he's like trying to show me how to, you know, pick everything apart, and it was. It was delightful. You know, I wanted to record a bunch of stories about Tay. You know, maybe something from our trip to New Orleans to see widespread panic in 2010. But now that I'm sitting here, I think those stories can wait to another time uh, when we can all get together and remember Tay in person. Uh, right now, what I want to be remembered about Tay was how he brought people together. I thought it was elevator music and I didn't understand it um, and they forced it down my throat and made it really inconvenient for me to work there when they would go on their panic tours um, but when Tay Tay would talk about it it was just different for me um, it just had a, a different feeling I know that everyone loves it and it's special to everyone but he would just light up um, and it took 11 years and mo me moving away from Denver to finally understand what the music does to you. Um, shortly after I moved back to the Midwest uh, in 2008, um, Widespread Panic came through Chicago and Taylor and a great group of people came out and uh, we put them up for the weekend. And we just, we had a great weekend. And, and once again, Taylor was the, he was the light of that weekend. He had everybody laughing, he had everybody smiling. He was, he was the, any room he walked into, right? He was, he was the light of that room. His love for music, widespread panic, jam bands, other bands, like you all know, the bass guitar, his tube stereo, and his sometimes festival vibe on life was amazing to everyone that he met. His ability to befriend anyone and help those in need. Well, Tay was kind from day one that I met him. And he would continue to be one of the nicest humans I have met. We were actually very close to wedding day and um, it was my bachelor night. Uh, and Tay was obviously a big part of that event. Um, and it was pretty low-key until one of the guys suggested um, we go to an adult bar. Uh, Tay had a lot of nicknames. Um, let's go through a couple of them for fun. So we got Taylor, Tay, Tato, Taser. He and I used to play pranks in high school. Um, one time we played a prank where we um, took all of the popcorn from the rest of the night after the movie theater, the AMC 24 had closed and um, we took the bags over to Tyler Johnson's house and we slipped the bags under, um, making it so that when he picked it up, you know, the popcorn was gonna fly everywhere. And um, I mean, it was like an episode of the Dana Carvey show. It was so funny. He was always Tay Dog to me every time I saw him. Tay Dog. Big Tay. Tay Tonto. Toiter. Uh, no. Toiter. Tater. Tay called me Toiter. Anyway, fast forward to where Tay thought I was tough. Um, a guy in the club, uh, I guess, mistake, mistaking me for someone else uh, because we were both wearing a, a, a checked shirt. Um, and supposedly, I guess, he thought I stole his hat. So he came up and confronted me and pushed me. And um, you know, I, uh, I didn't stand for it. And we got into, into words. And Tay was behind me. And uh, anyway, the guy backed down. and. And after that, Tate pulled me aside as we went uh, to the bar, we bellied up to the bar for a brother shot, um, which was whiskey and I couldn't handle it. I still can't handle that uh, to this day, but that was our brother shot. I call it the brother shot. And before we took our shots, he told me, you know, man, I know you can hold your own. And I'm so proud to have seen you do that to that guy. And 
I'm happy you're marrying my sister and you can take care of her. And what's so funny in retrospect is that uh, I don't think it was me. I think it was Tay and the huge group of guys behind me, but Tay credited me with that. And again, that's just Tay's selflessness, right? I mean, he builds everybody up uh, and makes you feel like a superman and a superhero. Um, and it's just an amazing ability to make other people's lives so awesome. Hi, my name is Taylor Eckelberger. Tay was a close friend of mine. It was his little T and big T. Um, but beyond our namesake, it went so much more, as I know it did with everybody. Tay was just, just a one in a million kind of guy. You know, he could turn a, a bad time into a, a good time real easy just by being there and uh, his love was infectious for sure <laughs> uh chef uh t furious oh man there's probably 10 more i just can't think of them right now i'm so sorry to hear about taylor tay tay big tasty the many names we called him i'm so sorry um breaks my heart such a wonderful kind, compassionate human being. There's a lot of things that I'll never forget about Tay or things I won't be able to do without thinking about him. Um, for sure, eating Moe's wings and sitting out on the porch, um, it definitely is, is a memory that will never escape me. Um, another thing is his generosity. You know, he, he brought us down, first row to see widespread panic uh, many times and, and always shared everything that he had. He still never missed a birthday always messaged on holidays. Our last communication was on Christmas. He, well, excuse me, a couple days before Christmas because he knew he'd be busy with y'all and wanted to make sure I got his Merry Christmas wishes even a few days early. It just, looking back on that, it really reflects what a thoughtful, kind, special person he was. All the other encounters we had um, over the years, mostly at widespread panic shows at Red Rocks, um, I just, you know, he'd just light up when I saw him and um, he was just, and I would light up <laughs> too, but I just really always looked forward to seeing him and just giving him a hug and just feeling really good um, in, his, in his presence and knowing that he was at his favorite place on earth. He was undeniably one of the funniest people I'd ever met and also the sweetest. I keep thinking of a lot of memories of us when we were children. Once when we were 16 and I remember I got in a fight with Carly so right away you came over and picked me up and you know consoled me and everything and telling me that everything's all right and that, you know, she's my sister and I need to love her a lot. And I, I remember you really preaching that to me and I remember how close you and Megan were. Anyone close to Taylor knew his devotion to his family and also saw his ability to treat friends and strangers like they were a part of his family. Grew up with him throughout the years. Played a lot of hockey, a lot of street fun, a lot of a lot of good times over the years. Not only was Tay awesome and brilliant, but he was so smart and, I mean, hilarious. You know, we spent hours crying, laughing. One thing I loved about Tay was uh, he didn't just laugh at anything. You know, like, if I made Tay laugh, it made my night because I knew I said something that was actually funny. Every time I saw him, he was like, right here, right on the cheek. He became <sighs> such a great uncle. <sighs> Those girls loved him so much, loved him so much. My kids loved him. My son, Skylar, was heartbroken. <sighs> he always wanted to go to Uncle Tay Tay's restaurant. And... I just 
had this thingy. I knew he liked baseball, so I bought this. We had so many great times uh, seeing live music, listening to Grateful Dead late night. In honor of, of Taylor and the time we spent together in Fort Collins and CSU, I've got the background of the Poudre Canyon right here. Uh, I've got my ratty old Colorado State uh, sweatshirt that I dug out of the closet. Um, I am 99% sure that Taylor had the exact same sweatshirt, which is why I put it on today. Um, either he had the same sweatshirt or he was always wearing mine. I'm not sure which was which. Some of my fondest memories are just, you know, hanging out and playing street hockey in front of Tristan's house. Um, and then um, in the band that Tay kind of started with, the, that was the Heroes, um, and we played some shows, and, um, and I thought we were actually pretty good. He just had this way about him that you really felt like he cared, and he did. When you talked, he listened, and he was, just had this magnetic personality, and I'm sure Everyone agrees with that, that you just wanted to be around him um, and you wanted nothing but good things for him. We were just la we're laughing and reminiscing about how over the holidays we would all always come home and have our family meals, but then we would all always get together and go to the castle and then come back to inevitably one of our parents' houses and you would take our leftovers and whip up a delicious late night snack. I think that most, I'm gonna miss his expressions and his hugs. Um, he made me feel safe wherever we were. Um, if I was scared, um, I'm sober, but you know, when I wanted to relapse or worse, Taylor was there, and with just a word, he eased my mind. I loved talking to Tay about music and food and family. He was always so awesome to talk with. He we could sit there for hours. I remember one night sitting on his back patio in frigid cold, 20 degrees, till about 3 in the morning, just talking and talking and talking about everything. He was always such a good listener. He made the transition to a new place at a very challenging time in my life a lot easier and a whole lot more welcoming. And then when my dad died, he his flowers were the first to arrive with the most loving, supportive message. I still remember just reeling from those few surreal days and his message really brought me back down to earth I could feel his support from thousands of miles away. He was an awesome friend. Um, friend, confidant, always kept me smiling. Um, but just as far as memories are concerned, I have to say this one, because obviously Tay is incredible as chef. And it was my first cooking competition with him, which was obviously a dumb idea to do with from the get-go. Like, I love cooking. He knows that, but I'm in no way a chef, and especially to the caliber of Tay. You know, it's a lot of my closest friends are friends that I met through Tay. You know, and Tay didn't care who you were or where you came from, what your interests really were, as long as you were a good person. And I think that quality is what brought so many people together and why Tay is so deeply loved. The stories I could tell from that great chapter of my life. Taylor is the reason that my wife and I first got acquainted in 2010, and many other friendships and bonds were shared between us around this time. Friends like Josh Sevy, Cameron Brown, Stephen Allison, Lily McWilliams, Miranda Grow, and Christina Carmichael. But it was cornbread, so again, one, who the hell does a cooking competition against Tay? And two, who the fuck would do it with cornbread? Um, and I lost, obviously. I mean, clearly. Always did. Every single one. Tay was an incredibly talented person, um, not only in his, his social adeptness and uh, ability to just magnetize anyone on this planet. Uh, he at one point gave me this nickname, and um, I don't 
feel super appropriate saying it, but um, but he used to call me Ice Bitch. And, um, you know, I just, I mean, he was so funny. He was just so funny. And, um, you know, he always treated me like, like one of the guys. And, you know, um, I mean, I, I personally loved it and I thought it was hilarious and so did a lot of other people. And ultimately, Tay was just the most fun, loving, wonderful person. He never had a bad attitude. He was always there to support his friends. He was an anchor in our friends, uh, in our friend circle. I did learn some things from that competition. One, you can put a cast iron skillet in the oven, I have no clue. Two, that if you lose, do it with a smile because it doesn't mean that you did bad. Thank you for that time. After falling in love with widespread finally, <laughs> I always thought or revisited um, him and his love for it and always felt excited for the day that I would run back into him and be able to talk to him about it and relate to him. Um, so maybe one day we'll be able to do that. Tay loved going to Panic at Red Rocks. That was his big thing every year and we all had the grandest time. Oh man. I think that's what I'll remember always, is just him in, the, in those prime moments in life that meant the most. And it meant the most to him and it meant the most to all of us. And we're very blessed to share those memories. I think that he has changed me personally because he showed me that <laughs> that you can be accepting and, and incredibly friendly to people that are some of any walk of life. He was always an inspiration to me as a chef. Um, he kind of brought me into the world um, of cooking and, and that's become a real big part of my life and uh, I have Tay to, to thank for that. He continued to mentor me uh, in that capacity until just recently. Incredibly artistic person um, with his ability uh, to make food that just literally went straight to your heart. Um, loved his food more than anything. Obviously, George, you're up there too, uh, but Taylor was certainly an incredible, incredible chef. Despite the difference in our age, my sisters and I are so glad that we got to know you and understand how truly sweet and kind of a person you were. You also made the best chicken fingers that I think I've ever eaten in my life. God, don't we all know he was always late to everything? But when he'd walk in, the party would stop, the music would get turned down, and everybody would cheer because Tay was finally there. I can't, I can't think of the number of events, events that my wife and I stayed at late just waiting for Tay to finally show up. And it was always worth it. It was always worth it. Even if it was a quick hug hello, and then a hug goodbye right after, because we were late to get home. It was always worth those extra minutes to wait for the big guy. Um, I'm so grateful, George, for the amazing vinyl setup. It's a daily reminder of Tay. It already was, and now it's just that much more potent. I continue to value it as my most treasured possession, and I will be sure to play some pet sounds in Tay's honor. Um, him and I just kind of gravitated to each other. In fact, I remember the, the next stage in our relationship, um, Colorado State University had a brewery and restaurant in the student center, and it was pretty awesome because between classes, you had an hour break, you go in there, you get a beer, you get a sandwich, there's nine holes of Frisbee golf right outside, you play nine holes, and you get back to class pretty sweet. Welcome to Colorado State. Um, so in my regular routine, I go in and I order a, order a beer. And this is another moment that I can visualize in my mind too. I ordered a dark beer. It was like a porter or a stout. And I'm getting ready to order my food. And all of a sudden behind the bar walks up Taylor. Taylor works there. Who knew? I just met Taylor a few weeks earlier. I've seen him around a few times. And he's like, buddy, I got something for you. Put the menu away. I got something for you. Well, later in life, we actually, uh, we both went to CSU, but at different years. And um, we, I, we went to a widespread panic concert and, in Chicago. And um, 
I had uh, found my way to the floor independent of him and some of the people that we went with and that was our goal was to get on the floor. We didn't have tickets for the floor and when he found out how I got down there, um, you know, he just looked at me and he says, still icy after all these years and it just made my life. He was a great friend of many people. He was always around to be a great roommate, play hockey with. Roller hockey, we used to play hours and hours of NHL on EA Sports on the PlayStation. We would probably do things and be not supposed to do, but we would stop our time and say, hey, you want to run one? And we'd play a game of NHL. As we grew up, Tay was a in, was somebody that you always wanted to be around and you wanted him there anytime you were doing some going to a show uh, if you had a party he was the one that wanted to make make sure everybody <laughs> was having a good time and was that he would insist on making making food and I think that is because Tay generally wanted to make everyone happy and then also, Tay went on a trip with us, with my family, to um, New Hampshire, New York, and Maine. And um, just so many memories from that trip have been flooding back. Uh, whether it was, you know, hanging out at in our backyard at the pool or down at your house, or, you know, in the Lowry's basement, or the Roberts' garage, or at the flower shop with Tyler Huseman, or, in high school, hanging out at uh, Tyler Johnson's house or Tyler Johnson's cabin. Um, there are just so many memories and um, I can't wait to see you guys so I can share them in more detail with you. And um, I know that Tay and I are forever eternally bonded. You facilitated one of the greatest concert experiences of my life and I will never forget you. Until we meet again, my friend. I just want to thank the Carlbergs for bringing Tay into our lives and sharing him with us over the years. You know, we're really going to miss him. He was a special dude and uh, I just want him to know that he was loved by many. I'm absolutely devastated about Tay and can only imagine the heartbreak this must be for your family. Gonna miss your bear hugs, Tay. I'm really sad I don't get to look forward to those anymore. I miss you, buddy. I'm, not, I'm sure I'll see you around again. And we can hug each other one big bear hug once again. Love you, buddy. Thanks for being there with us as long as you did be. Southhood for life. I love you guys. I hope you're hanging in there. Uh, I've been thinking about Tay constantly, and everyone else has. Everyone loved him so much. I really miss you, buddy. And I love you with all my heart. Your parents gave me this when I drive by in Phoenix. I'm always going to cherish it with all my heart. And then they also gave me your sunglasses. There. Yeah. They were great for me to wear, especially on the way home. And as a tribute to him, I just wanted to read this quote from a widespread panic song called May Your Glass Be Filled. May your family share laughter, your songs always play. May your wishes come true, even those left unprayed. Hand on my shoulder, gentle cloud on the hill. May your heart's doors be open forever and ever. May your glass, it be filled. He was a really dear friend and a really dear friend to all of us. We will all miss you and we'll honor your memory. He will be deeply missed, but tonight I think about Tay in a positive light and how much fun we had together and tonight we're going to be celebrating him, but my heart and spirit goes out to the friends and family and um, about Tay, so I love you all. For now, Tay, 
just want to say thanks for everything. Thanks for the time we got to spend together. I'm sorry I had to get cut short. <laughs> but, uh, rest in peace, brother. And, uh, we'll see you on the other side. Taylor was always so gracious. And I'm gonna miss him a lot. <laughs> I just wanna send so much love to the Carlbergs. <laughs> and I know we'll see Tegan one day. What a great person. I'm so sorry. Um, we'll see you again someday, Big Tay. Big Tasty Tay Tay. Um, I love you, brother. And I'm so sorry that you had to leave us early. Thank you for the time we spent together and for the light you've shed on every one of our lives. Love you, brother. This process of remembrance has helped me and my family, and we want to help the Carlbergs in any way that we can. Today, we really loved you, and we know that you are in a better place now, and we'll be all thinking of you for a long, long time, and you will not be forgotten, my friend. Love you. He has changed who I am for the better. He will be missed. And uh, I'm devastated to see him go. I love you so much. You are a bright light in my life in many dark times and in good times too. You are just a shining star and you will be missed all around the world. I know it. You're a special soul. I think music was a, such a key part to all of our friendships however Tay I think our love of music has ever has forever changed me and there's three songs I think that I can never hear without thinking about you and in no particular order that would be lawyers guns and money any version the opening notes to bow-legged woman and any cover of Ruben and Cherise Old friends, heroes, and lifetimes. Never let a single memory fade away. I love you, Tay. I'm thinking of your family and wish I could give you a hug in person. I'm so sorry this happened and I will miss him dearly. Colleen and George, I love you guys so much and I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, it's impossible for me to process as a dad. And I know I'm just a son-in-law, but I want to be here for you guys um, as, a, as the best son-in-law that I can be. Um, and uh, I love Tay and will always hold our uh, place in our hearts for him uh, forever. A lot of things are gonna remind us of Tay and you know his memory is gonna live on for a really long time. And I uh, just wanna let you all know we love you and uh, I'm sorry for your loss. I guess mostly what I wanna tell you guys is that um, it was a great honor to know your son. I'm so lucky to even have encountered him in my life. <laughs>